Hey guys, walking through a Kihabara as I usually do, and I came across this straight out of Gardens of the Galaxy 2. It's a Mattel brand classic football video game. Well, electronic game at least. Uh, you may have seen one of these featured in the uh, the start of Gardens of the Galaxy 2. Uh, yeah, it's a little readout and that. He's had it retrofitted some sort of sensor array or radar or uh, a device that tells him stuff anyway. And um, yeah, I actually found one today. I was walking along through the uh, Tokyo Radio Department store there. And uh, there's a little retro gaming store. Uh, guy sells Apple gear and uh, retro game stuff. And I saw this sitting on the shelf. Um, it was sold as a junk item as a lot of stuff like this sort of is. If it hasn't been fully tested. And they'll sell it. No test. No warranty, you buy it, and if it doesn't work, too bad, so sad. If it does work, you got it cheap. So um, I picked it up because I um, well, I, I needed to own it. I, I had to buy it. I couldn't leave it there. So I paid my money, I got this, and now I'm sitting at home ready to take it apart, see what's inside, and either see if we can fix it. If it's unfixable, well, maybe I'll do a second video on uh, converting this over to a uh, movie-accurate prop replica. But um, for starters, let's take it apart see what's inside and see what makes this thing tick. So um, I'm going to assume that it's going to have the usual uh, corrosion on the battery terminals as these things so often do. Um, so we'll take the battery door off and yep as I suspected it's got the uh, it's got that green nastiness there. Isn't uh, the ends are kind of a sort of clean so we might get something if we put some batteries in I'm gonna put some batteries in straight away uh, see if we can get something on the screen um, then we'll take it apart because um, I don't want to break it before I've tried it alrighty give it a bit of a wiggle hopefully something what do we got oh it seems to work Kind of. It's very dim. I'll turn the lights out and uh, I'll zoom in. So that's basically what we got. Looks like a whole array of LEDs or something. We can see scores and stuff. I've got no idea how to play this, but it seems to be working somewhat. Alright, turn the lights back on and uh, we'll tear it apart and see if we can either fix it or do something with it anyway. Alright, get this thing open. Oh, two little locating pins. And there we go. So we've got the battery, power comes in, we've got a, a piezo buzzer for the sound. And looks like there's a little amplifier board here. That looks like it's been bodged in. I don't know if that's a retrofit or not, but... It comes over and is wide in here. We'll have a, look, a close look at that soon. But it's, um, there's a speaker output, actually marked speaker, on the PCB, but it's got this external, like, amplifier. It, it's got a transistor and some capacitors, and a, or transistor, capacitor, and a resistor. It's taken power, and it's got the input for the speaker here. So it looks like they, maybe it wasn't loud enough in, uh, after production, and they did a retrofit bodges that in. Interesting. Alright, well, looks like the next step, take these boards out and see what's on the other side. Alright, so let's pull this out, <coughs> see what's on the other side. So it is a uh, LCD, which has seen better days. It's got, uh, what's that, six red LEDs on either side. If I lift that up, oh there we go, we can pull that out. Ah, yeah, 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 okay, we'll have a, another look at this in a sec. Yeah, that LCD's definitely seen better days for sure. Alright, so we've got our um, six backlight LEDs, all red. So um, you've got two at the top, that will be shining across for the, uh, the score, and then the four bottom ones for the actual play area. Looks like a chip on board, cost cutting down to the extreme. Uh, so, well, that'll be a, a custom little mask ROM or a little, little processor or some sort of something in there which is custom made for this game. They may have a 
one chip they could use for a different games depending on what's shown on the screen. It might be a, a, the same game mechanic behind a few different games, or maybe a custom chip for each game. Um, who knows? We'll have to get a few to and decap them, but it's a bit more advanced than what I'm looking to do. So, yeah, then we got Flex over to the uh, switchboard. And these are little tactile domes. These are still uh, available. You can still use these. They're, they're actually uh, a nice way of doing switches. Um, very cheap. And uh, they give you a nice snap action, which the uh, the rubber dome, which is often used in like uh, TV remotes and uh, keyboards and stuff, cheap computer keyboards. Uh, don't, they, they give it more of a softer, squishy feel. These are a nice snap action, but they're very cheap. And then you can have your, your button on top, which pushes down. That can be uh, a custom shape. And uh, yeah, cheap to produce. It's just held down with some sticky tape. You actually buy these from manufacturers um, in custom shapes on the tape already. You can do it yourself, like uh, lay them out like a surface mount components and then tape over the top. Or um, manufacturers often will um, give the option to do the layout for you on a like a large square of sticky tape or whatever they use, plastic uh, self-adhesive. And um, yeah, they'll lay it out for you. So you just get a in production. You just peel the back off and stick it down. Peel the back off, stick it down. So it's a lot quicker in production. But yeah, I've seen these in, in modern products and they work quite well. Also, what's good about these is because uh, well, this one isn't quite done I, like the most ideal way, uh, is that if the tape is fully sealing around the switch, it basically makes it a, uh, uh, almost a hermetic seal in that no dust or moisture or anything can get inside. So they do last a long time. Until, of course, the uh, the metal fatigues, but that's not really a common failure mode with these from what I've seen. So, yeah, we've got the two switches there. There's not much else to say in this. It's pretty, pretty basic. Resistors, capacitors, LEDs, and a chip on board. A few switches, and that's it. So, what I can do, however, we'll take that out. And we might have a bit of a closer look at this uh, amplifier as well. I'm not sure how that's held in. And I'm, I'm kind of half convinced that it is a, uh, a factory bodge because they've got the glue on the wires coming across. It looks like someone's gobbed glue on the wires to stop them from breaking off. You know, if it's thrown the, in your backpack, stuck in your pocket, the wires can flap around inside and uh, eventually break. So they glue them down and that will um, hold them in place so that the solder joint doesn't break. But um, that glue is on top of the wires coming to this little amplifier board. So it looks like they've done that in production. That, resi that uh, transistor is a S9014. Yeah, S9014 I think that is. Then we got what looks like a capacitor or maybe that's even an, an inductor and a resistor so that's just going to be a little amplifier board nothing more than that it's really simple but it's glued in so I don't want to snap it and break it by taking it out but the next step the next most interesting thing is the LCD which hmm looking a little bit worse for wear but it's got this uh silver piece on the back and that's actually hiding something a little bit interesting so what i'll do i'll cut the tape and uh, we'll have a look underneath because i can see it from the side but it might be a bit difficult without taking it off to show you what's going on there so inside this screen i'll pull it apart we've got the uh, lc panel which is just uh one of the usual custom made jobbies with the little you know all the pieces are Segments are custom designed for this one game. Uh, it's got the zebra strip there, which I won't pull off. I'll leave it on there. But basically, it's uh, a sandwich of three layers of rubber. And the central layer, which is the uh, the grey, it actually has uh, pieces of like this carbonised rubber or something like that. And it only conducts in one direction. That's this direction here. It doesn't conduct that way, only that way. And uh, what they do is they press that down onto the circuit board. You've got these uh, gold-plated fingers. And when that's pressed down, the signal comes to that finger, goes through the conductive trace, and into the, uh, the LCD. So that's how they uh, get to the LCD. You'll see this on many LCDs like this, uh, this uh, rubber strip. And if you get 
like uh, segments of your LC which aren't working. If you take it off and give it a clean with some alcohol on both sides, maybe even some uh, deoxit if you got that, or a similar sort of thing. After you, you clean it with that stuff, uh, give it a good clean with some isopropyl alcohol, and uh, that'll often bring the uh, segments back to life. A bit of oxidation there will stop the signal getting through. So that's uh, pretty standard stuff. Um, nothing groundbreaking there, but what I was interested in was this piece here. So we've got a bit of a, looks like a thin bit of diffusing plastic or something, which just uh, diffuses the light, and then this plastic thing. So we've got the uh, reflective piece of like foil paper there, and uh, a nice fancy light guide. It goes that way up when you're playing. You can see in the side there's uh, six spaces for the, uh, the LEDs, and then all these little dots, and each one of those dots represents one position on the uh, the play area, and these ones at the top are for your score. What that does is basically you can the LEDs can shine in through the sides, and when the light travels through, kind of like an optic fiber, it'll hit one of these uh, squares and then reflect back up through the LCD and into your eye. Now the reason I did that and not have the whole area backlit is a couple of reasons. One is that by having the area selectively lit. The rest of the area is effectively black, so you increase the uh, the apparent dynamic contrast of the screen. So the screen, the black areas look blacker compared to the red, or in this case, red. Uh, the light areas, which look lighter. If you had an LCD back in the day, this, you know, was what early 80s or something. LCD technology probably wasn't as great as it is now. Well, it definitely wasn't as great as it is now, and uh, they probably would have got a lot more light bleed than we do. So um, by doing this, you uh, mitigate that light bleed by only shining the light through exactly where you need it. The other idea is uh, you can use dimmer LEDs because you don't have to light up the whole area. The light is piped through and only shines out uh, where it's needed. So you can use dimmer LEDs, lower um, power use, longer battery life. They would have been using you know, zinc carbon cells or something rather than alkalines or rechargeables that we have today. So um, you can use dimmer LEDs, cheaper LEDs of course, and uh, longer battery life. So it's all round a bit of a win-win. So yeah, not a not a bad little design there at all. It's probably one of the most complex parts of the whole thing, apart from that chip on board, but yeah, for mechanical design it's it's quite nice. So that's what we got inside one of these Mattel classic football L C D uh electronic games. I wouldn't call it a video game, electronic game. Um let me know what you reckon I should do with it. Should I keep it? I mean the L C D's pretty old and it's pretty dim, it's not not working. It works, the game works, but it's pretty hard to see the screen, so it's not in mint condition, that's for sure. So uh, is it worth me keeping it, or should I just strip it down and make it into a uh, into a Guardians of the Galaxy prop? What do you reckon? Let me know in the comments below. And uh, that's it for this, for this episode. Alright guys, don't forget we got that Patreon. Keep watching the videos. We'll see you next time.